Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 10th of June. I hope you all had a great trading week and looking forward to the upcoming week. And um, before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, the content that I provide if you think that it provides great use to you and it my, may provide obviously great uh, use to uh, others as well so share and share alike much appreciated so uh, looking at the week ahead 10th of June in the United States the Federal Reserve's interest rate decision and economic project projections will take center stage investors will also be paying close attention to CPI and PPI inflation data as well as the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index globally the May inflation rates for China will be of significant interest in in the UK, key indicators to watch include the April GDP growth rate, unemployment rate and industrial production figures. Additionally, industrial production data will be released for the euro area alongside trade balance reports. The Bank of Japan's interest rate decision and Australia's NAB business confidence index will also be closely monitored. So lots going on this week, lots of market moving news. So let's get into this week's trade analysis before we get into the actual week analysis and just looking at a few trades that I've entered this week as well as a trade update on uh, on gold and uh the Australian dollar Swiss franc is the trade analysis. So um, this is something that I entered into on, um, it was the Wednesday, yes, the Wednesday evening. Now, um, if I go to the daily chart, uh, this level here uh, looked to me like it was a decent stop hunt. And what we got is a move below the level, and then we got a move above. Above, right, and close back inside. So for me, this was a um, a nice uh, potential stop hunt. We don't know for sure, but it could be one. And then um, I entered into three positions. So one was a market order at the close of the uh, daily candle, and then I had a fifty percent pending order uh, limit order buy, and then I've had a ninety five limit order buy. Now my stop loss is at 0 0.5883 and we've pulled back a bit um of course beyond the level so i've still got enough uh, room on my stop loss uh, we do have a round number here which can act like a bit of a magnet as well so we've got the 0 0.59 so it's just gone be below uh, my final uh, pending order entry but that's fine and what i'm doing is obviously uh, by doing that if i basically have uh, prices pull back three, um, you know, to three orders, then I get better risk reward out of uh, out of these if I choose to swing trade these. But let's see what happens on this this week. Uh, fundamentally, I wanted to be a buyer of the Australian dollar. Why is that? Because uh, when we look at the uh, the Australian dollar, um, you know, Australian central bank. Australia's central bank may have no choice but to resume raising interest rates this year if inflation fails to slow, according to money markets, setting it up as a potential outlier to post-pandemic global tightening cycle that has all but ended. Aside from Japan, which only began hiking uh, this year, Australia is the only developed economy where money markets are still pricing in some chance of a rate increase. The reasons uh, include the cash rate of 4.35%, that's lower than uh, peers, and inflation is proving stickier than the Reserve Bank had anticipated. And it says here, Australia's inflation came in hotter than expected in the first quarter and April and the April print last week showed a quickening of price gains to 3.6%. So overnight swaps are pricing in a one in five chance of a hike by the RBA at its August 6th meeting uh, uh, following second quarter inflation data due on July the 31st. A cut is not fully priced in until September 2025. So um, they're way out on the um, on the timeline when it comes to uh, rate cuts. So uh, the potential for them to hike rates uh, is definitely a lot more hawkish, even if they hold rates 
and they don't hike rates. Um, at, you know, they're, they're one of the last central banks to look to uh, uh, cut rates anyway. So that's actually quite hawkish for the um, for the Australian central bank. But what we've had recently for Switzerland, if we go to the Swiss franc um, news channel, uh, and we have the Swiss uh Inflation held uh, at its fastest pace this year, eroding the case for Swiss National Bank interest rate cut when officials meet later this month. So there's been a bit of a turn um, when it comes to Swiss franc strength. And this is basically due to the rumor now starting that uh, they are likely to hold in um, in June. So it says while Tuesday's number aligns with a 1.4 percent average, the S&B anticipates for the second quarter, the central bank has at times overestimated inflation. Uh, that means a reading below the forecast would have supported another rate reduction. And it says here now we can expect that the SMB will stay on hold at its June meeting. Uh, Maver, cousin of Bloomberg Economics, wrote last week in a change to her previous forecast, citing robust economic growth and the weakening of the Swiss franc. Uh, since officials last met. Now, um, of course, uh, a rate hold uh, when there should have been a rate cut is uh, obviously positive for the Swiss franc, and the Swiss franc has appreciated since um, since then in terms of the, uh, the, 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 the rumours started. But I still think even though the Swiss franc uh, is uh, holding rates, I still think that they will be cutting rates to some degree. They're still below their 2% target, the Swiss National Bank. And so um, I do think that we could turn around at some point. Is it going to be here? Nobody knows. Of course, it may or may not be. If it's not, then I'll just try again, you know, to get long down uh, in this demand zone around here. So I do think at some point the Swiss franc's uh, appreciation or pricing out <clears throat> of rate cuts uh, will come to an end and uh, I'm willing to put some money that it's going to be around here. If not, again, like I said, I'll just look to get involved uh, somewhere down at these uh, lows. So let's see what happens uh, this week. Also as well, uh, got involved in the dollar Swiss on Friday. Uh, these are the uh, this was the entry actually it was on a, an, an eight hour chart, uh, a nice entry candle here. And also as well, I've put uh, four pending orders uh, or three pending orders, limit orders, buy limit orders and the market orders. So I actually got in right at the uh, 85, uh, sorry, 8953 level. And uh, of course, if it pulls back, then I'll have a buy order there, buy order there, and another buy order with my stop loss at the 0 0.8864 area. So let's see if uh, that happens, you know, this happens this week. Um, we do have, of course, uh, you know, the, uh, the core inflation or the inflation rate and core inflation rate. Uh, coming out. So as long as the data does support um, and inflation is remaining stubborn, um, then I think that we should head a lot higher again against the Swiss franc. But we'll get into the dollar um, a bit later. And also as well, gold. So gold uh, was a trade I'd entered into a couple of weeks ago and um, I've got my final position stopped out. So I took two positions. I got triggered into three positions, uh, moved uh, my uh, final position up to around. It was the three it was somewhere around here. I think it was around the three, two, uh, sorry, two, three, two, sevens. I think it was. Uh, it was obviously the stop was there but below these lows. Um, and then I just moved it up to here and then ended up getting stopped out on the Friday. So um, still a decent trade, two wins and one partial small loss. Um, so that was fine. So that was a nice profitable trade on gold. And again, uh, this is actually pulling back to an opportunity to buy. But again, I'll get into that. Uh, later on in the video so those are really the trades i'm fully out of gold now and uh, looking to re-enter at some point so looking at the week ahead and the us dollar and we're in the us dollar 
uh, equally weighted index. And uh, the reason why I use the equally weighted index is because I think it's better than, for example, the DXY or the uh, or the UD, uh, USDX, right? Um, so I've got a video about that. And I'll put it on the top right hand side, uh, the link on the top right hand side. So you can watch that and learn, learn how to apply the uh, not only the dollar equally weighted dollar index, but um, all of the uh, equally weighted indexes for each currency. So this is used as really um, uh, to understand uh, dollar strength, dollar weakness, appreciation, etc. certain levels and um, of course, we come down into a really nice demand zone, nice fresh area, and then we got some fundamental news that pushed prices higher. The uh, the fundamental news was that on uh, if we go down a bit, it was on on the Friday. Uh, U.S. jobs growth surged in May and wages accelerated, prompting traders to push back the expected timing of Federal Reserve interest rate cuts and so this is one of the last major reports federal fed officials will see before next week's meeting when they're widely forecast to keep borrowing costs at a two decade high a closely watched inflation report will be released on the morning of their wednesday decision and traders trim bets uh, on how much the fed will cut rates this year dialing back expectations from earlier in the week as recent data on manufacturing and jobs openings came in softer than anticipated. So um, if you go to the FedWatch tool, what you'll see is that for September, right, September's um, uh, uh, announcement, the probabilities of a hold um, from Thursday was 31.3%. And then it jumped to 49.5%. So the longer that the Federal Reserve hold rates is uh, the more that the dollar is likely to appreciate, right? So that's what's happened with the recent data. But we still do have, again, uh, important data this week, uh, lots of inflation data as well as the FOMC. So um, let's see what happens there. Um, but keep an eye on the FedWatch tool. Um, for the probabilities and if you see uh, the chances of a hold start to increase maybe up to 55 60 70 percent then you what you'll see is that will align with uh, dollar appreciation or it should anyway and so um, overall uh, the dollar I think if it rides the wave and there's supportive data in terms of uh, you know sticky inflation I think the dollar could make a little bit of a rally hopefully to the upside but of course if it doesn't in terms of the data comes out this week and it's disappointing and inflation looks like it's coming back down to their uh two percent target then of course you know, the dollar is likely to sell off and if the dollar is likely to sell off then i will get out of my uh dollar long trade so I just you know I take the small losses um and so yeah that's basically what uh, the situation is for the uh, dollar at the moment so any pullbacks will be buying opportunities if, of course, the data supports it. But if inflation is not seen as being sticky and it comes down, you know, more than expected, then in fact, I think the dollar might be a sell. And that's where you might want to look to buy gold, right? So gold would be at a nice uh, demand zone. So uh, for me, it's a bit tricky at the moment trading the dollar. I think it's going to go to the upside. And I'm hoping that obviously... Um, uh, the data does support that, but if it doesn't, I'll get out of the trade and I'll look to go long on the dollar. Looking at the dollar yen, and so the dollar yen, this is last week's analysis. Let me just clear this up. So pretty much the um it was really all about um well, for the yen, it was about whether the um central bank, the Bank of Japan, intervened and how much they intervened by. Now, they intervened, it came out, let's go to the Japanese channel, and it says here that they, it says, we intervened in the market to uh, counter excessive FX moves, and this was basically talking about um, back in April, I think it was, yeah, end of April, beginning of May, um, but it, it, it looked like it wasn't necessarily enough to kind of make the markets um uh well it made the market indifferent to the point of um it wasn't too much or 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 too little so it didn't really have an effect on the market the market knew that 
it was um, there was intervention, but it wasn't uh, necessarily a, a too high or too low of a number to the point where it would have moved the market. So it says here, um, Finance Minister uh, Shun, Shunichi Suzuki told reporters Tuesday, from that standpoint, we believe that it had a certain effect. Suzuki's remarks were the first from any official after his ministry disclosed figures Friday that indicate it spent $9.8 trillion, which is basically $62 billion, um, sorry, 9.8 trillion yen, which is six uh, 62.7 billion dollars to prop up the yen between April 26th and May the 29th. So, um, yeah, the, the, the yen, um, you know, once it was released, how much they spent, I don't think there was really much of a, of a reaction. Um, and so really now the fundamentals have, have started to kick back in. So again, it's really, I think, about uh, understanding uh, that even though the the yen may start continue to hike rates until the Federal Reserve looks to cut rates, I still think that the carry trade is um, in play, meaning that the uh, the currency with the highest interest rate is going to be the stronger of the two. So any pullbacks, I think, into this one five five area or one five fours, I think are going to be buying opportunities. But if the Fed are starting to or do start to look like they're cutting rates soon, then, of course, I think we're definitely going to see a ceiling on this. Uh, and you can look for some uh, some short trades up into this supply zone around here. Dollar Swiss, again, analyze this. Um, but uh, in short, uh, I do think that, the, you know, there there is the downside is potentially capped. But it really just depends upon, obviously, what happens this week. Of course, again, we've got um, the uh, core inflation uh, and the Fed report as well, as well as PPI this week. So lots uh, of, of data riding or going to determine, I guess, <clears throat> the, the direction of the dollar this week. So if you are a buyer, then you have to really kind of wait for a pullback unless you want to get involved on the Sunday, you know, morning or Sunday evening, I should say, uh, and look to trade this and buy at where we are now. If you're looking for a better discount, then you're looking for a pullback before looking at going uh, long. If you're looking for short trades on the dollar on this, you're gonna have to wait for prices to really kind of either come up to here, or you're gonna need prices to at least make a lower low, and then in fact pull back to where the lower high is before looking at going short. Looking at the dollar CAD and the Canadian dollar, um, the Bank of Canada cut rates this week. So um, I think all signs are really kind of pointing to um, a further Canadian dollar weakness. But let's uh, let's see what happens. <clears throat> One sec. So that's demand. And let's go to the Canadian dollar channel, matter of fact. And the Canadian dollar channel, uh, it says here that uh, Canada's labour market added fewer jobs than the rise in the working age population, pushing the unemployment rate higher and keeping more rate cuts on the table this year. So they already cut on the Wednesday and then Friday's report came out and, you know, basically added fewer jobs. And so not great. Um, un it says Friday's uh, report supports the Bank of Canada's view that the economy is still operating in excess supply, which has helped relieve price pressures. A rapidly expanding labour pool from high levels of immigration has continuously outpaced job creation over the past year. One reason policymakers opted to start their easing cycle. So Wednesday, they ended up cutting rates. So that was uh, Wednesday right here. Yeah, Wednesday interest rate decision, they cut it. Previous was 5%, now down to 4.75, which was actually expected. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think any pullbacks on the dollar CAD should be nice buying opportunities, whether the demand zone is there, uh, or whether it works there, or whether there's a reversal there. And of course, 
you know, the continued do- um, uh, strength for the uh, CAD in this exchange rate will depend this week upon what happens with the dollar as well. So any pullbacks, and if you get positive dollar news, I think that's really the uh, the buy. Now, if you're looking for uh, a bit of a sell, then I think this level up at the top is a decent area to look for um, uh, a, a short trade. But ultimately, I wouldn't necessarily uh, uh by a currency or a central bank that is looking to cut rates, right? So, because they're actively trying to devalue their currency by cutting rates. So, not yet, right? In terms of not yet, but not, 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 um, not, I'm not, a, I'm not a shorter regardless. I mean, there's definitely more and better trades to, uh, better currencies to buy than the Canadian dollar, especially against the US dollar. Uh, looking at the pound dollar and the pound dollar selling off a bit, basically uh, based on what's happened with non-farm payrolls. So there was a level there um, where prices had reacted from. It was a decent area as well in terms of an area of support and resistance right there within that wider area of uh, supply now uh, the pound is going to be a bit of a tricky one to trade or well, it should be straightforward but it could be a bit tricky because it's really going to be driven by um, by the election so in the UK we, we've got uh, an election our prime minister uh, current prime minister uh, Rishi Sunak uh, called a snap election uh, now the market is pricing in um, a, a, a Labour win and a majority Labour victory, right? It says here, after eight years of instability, a large Labour victory will lead to welcomed expectations of stability, a pound positive. And so um, the market likes stability. And so the market is kind of prepared for a large Labour majority. And um, as long as that happens, the pound should be supported. Now, if you know, the Conservatives are seen as chipping away at that lead and it becomes more of a closer election, then um, the that adds uncertainty uh, to the election, which adds uncertainty to the market and the market won't like uncertainty and the pound may start to uh, devalue. And it says here, the worst case scenario is, of course, the prospect of a hung parliament. While this would be initially negative for the pound, even this worst case scenario is unlikely to lead to any notable sustained pound selling. So um, that's the, the key word is definitely sustained pound selling. So um, although we might, you know, see a pullback to some degree, it's not going to be sustained uh, over the medium to long term. But if you are looking to buy the pound against the uh, the dollar, there is actually a hidden demand that starts from around there. Uh, and you're looking at buy trades and then the next area to look for a trade is going to be there the next area you're looking towards is going to be in terms of buying the dollar uh, you need really a bit more of a pullback and then you're looking for a trade to the downside so uh, it's either going to be one way or the other there or there so let's see what happens with the uh, the pound dollar not really a pair that i'm interested in to be fair but um yeah, let's see what happens. Pound yen, uh, pound yen. Uh, it's a bit, a bit of a tricky one in terms of uh, not necessarily fundamentally, but just the levels. Uh, the price didn't respect the uh, this level. Um, respected the uh, the higher level right here, but never really respected this level here. So I can delete that for now, and delete that, and then um, really, if you're looking for any kind of buy trade, I would probably suggest. Um, looking at a uh, move to the downside although there is definitely demand here uh, right i would probably say uh, maybe a bit more of a pull back down into that zone before looking at going uh long um and i would rather buy the pound over the yen although um just be a bit more cautious on the yen as we get closer to their july rate hike and if it does look like they're hiking again the yen could be um, start to look like a little bit of a buy, but I don't think it's going to be a sustained buy at all. Looking at the euro dollar and the euro dollar uh, this week, uh, definitely a big sell off. And there was a hawkish cut. I was talking about this from a couple of weeks ago. 
uh, with the private members. I mentioned it last week on YouTube and uh, Hawkish Cut is really about um, uh, a cut where you have, sorry, one second, you have, you have the central bank uh, that cuts rates, but their, their, their future forward guidance on whether they're going to do it again and continue um, cutting rates um, is basically uh, data dependent. So they're not committing to further rate cuts, which is basically a bit hawkish. That's why they call it a hawkish cut. So it says here, um, that the euro exchange rates strengthened after the European Central Bank cut rates but failed to commit to further rate cuts, instead saying it would watch data, or watch the data and decide on a meeting by meeting basis. So the euro would have fallen sharply had the ECB signalled that another rate cut was likely in July or August. Instead, the ECB was non-committal, saying the governing council will continue to follow a data-dependent and meeting-by-meeting -meeting approach to determine to determining the appropriate level and duration of restriction, said the ECB. So that is basically what is known as a hawkish cut, right? So this is the statement arguably gave less guidance than might have been expected on what comes next. In that sense, the immediate tone is a hawkish cut. This is not a central bank in a rush to ease policy, said Mark Wall, chief European economist at Deutsche Bank. So a hawkish cut <clears throat> on the uh, Thursday, right? That was Thursday, um, you know, caused the... Uh, the euro actually to strengthen uh, a bit probably caught a lot of uh, 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 retail traders who don't understand about hawkish cuts um, caught them out you might have been one of them um, hopefully not but um, if you were don't worry a lot of traders would have been caught out as well but it was really about what was you know going on on Friday and whether the dollar was going to you know obviously non-farm payrolls was going to um, and what those numbers were and obviously the numbers surprised massively to the upside strengthening the dollar um, and so yeah we had basically this pullback now uh, we do have uh, some demand and the demand zone here really draw it from um probably around here matter of fact i'll rather draw it from there um so we're in this zone here and this week we could actually still see a reversal depending on what happens with the dollar so if the dollar disappoints this week we could see these levels actually uh, be tested and a reversal at this area here so i still think the narrative is more about dollar what the what the you know the data is for the uh, for the dollar rather than um the euro at the moment so uh, yeah, any pullbacks into these zones? Let's see what happens if you do want to get long on the uh, the euro. Um, if you want to look looking to get long on the dollar, you're really looking for a pullback up into the, maybe these 109s um, area, maybe 10920, 10940, and then looking for a short trade around there. Euro yen again, uh, hawkish cut. You know, coming in. I do think that the euro is likely to continue to strengthen against the yen until really um, there is a sustained uh, cutting cycle from all other central banks. And there is obviously a sustained hiking, um, uh, you know, cycle from the uh, from the yen and the yen start to catch up in terms of their interest rate differentials. So if you are looking for a pullback down into this zone, the one six eight, if you're looking for a short trade, though, uh, I think there could be a decent area to look for shorts above this area here. The one, um, the one seven ones, yeah, one seven ones, one seven one fifties are going to be nice for a potential short. Euro pound and the euro pound, the pound really should be the stronger out of the two, considering that the um, the Bank of England are not looking to cut rates at the moment. Or not until August. So um, even though there was a hawkish cut, it wasn't enough to uh, send the, uh, the you know the, the the euro flying to the upside. So I think though any pullbacks into a, you know this area here uh, may be all right. Other than that, I think the nearest 
demands or sorry supply zone for sure is going to be really at this area here so um it's decent for an area in terms of technicals but let's see what happens if you are looking to buy the um the euro probably now is going to be the time uh Australian dollar, US dollar, again, the dollar, US dollar strengthened across the board after non-farm payrolls. Uh, but again, we could see a bit of a reversal, more depending upon the dollar strength of the dollar or what happens with the dollar data uh, this week. And these are really that's the, the area that you want to look towards uh, buying. There is a, a actually this, this demand zone does kind of come down to here. Uh, I'll draw it out for you so this is really what happens so you've got higher highs higher lows move there then you've got move there as well now once you start getting those higher highs higher lows you're drawing it really from the higher low right so that uh, the last bearish candle before prices make a new high is my rule of course it's not everybody's rule uh, but it's my rule and so um you know to draw the demand zone from here this is all demand right now if you get a wide area of demand like this then what you want to do is look to separate that and look to trade um uh confluences like support and resistance that's what you're really looking to trade and so for me if i'm trading within that wide area of demand then it's going to be at these types of levels around here why because not only do we have demand and strong demand um we also have uh, the confluence of uh, support and resistance and there's some others as well some other confluences that i use but these are just like the basic ones so if it, if it doesn't reverse somewhere around here right somewhere within this area right there then i would look for a move to go further down to the uh, 65s or 6480s before then looking to go uh, long if of course uh, the data supports that right so i have to be a buyer of the australian dollar but if you're looking to be a buyer of the uh, the uh, the us dollar i think 67 and above i think may again maybe 67 20 67 40s are going to be really the fresher area of supply this level has been touched once twice already so the more it gets touched is the op more open it is for a stop hunt so you really want to look for uh, any shorts above the uh, maybe the uh, the high here which is 0 0.671 was it one four one fives so that's really what the, the areas i'm looking to uh, trade if or if i was looking to trade this pair that's what i would be looking at not looking to trade this pair though you've got two strong currencies uh but unless obviously the us dollar is the uh, the weaker out of the two and it starts to cut first then i'll look to probably trade this pair and then gold again gold um this week selling off a bit but again this could be short-lived depending on what happens this week now we've come down into sorry a, a nice area of demand and so it's really about just looking for some long trades if you think that the dollar is going to weaken and there's going to be some bad news this week Pull back to maybe here or even better here down to these 2180 area but um i don't think the trade is over per se in terms of like i don't think the gold is an absolute sell um eventually it will still be a buy anyway because um you know the eventually the uh, the, the, the federal reserve are looking to cut rates it's basically being delayed so I do think overall gold should be um, a, a long in over the medium to long term, maybe in the short term, if, of course, the data comes out supporting um, or not supporting uh, the uh, the dollar. So, yeah, that's really my position. Uh, if you're looking for short trades and you're looking for a pullback all the way back up into the two, three, six area before looking or two, three, five, five area before looking at getting a uh, short in and around there. So uh, that's it for this week. I uh, hope you have a great trading week and I hope you all stay blessed. Take care. All the best.